Hello and welcome to my channel. Today's video is going to be a review and what fits in my Fendi First medium sized handbag. I created a reel that I posted on Instagram. I posted it as a YouTube short and I also posted it as a TikTok and I asked you in those postings if you would like for me to do a review and what fits in the Fendi First handbag and I got a resounding yes, we want to see that. So that's what today's video is all about. I'm not a luxury channel. I don't review luxury handbags on a regular basis, but I am a fashion and style channel and I feel that this bag is definitely an iconic bag for your wardrobe. So let's go ahead and dive into my thoughts on the bag. Let's talk about the basics for the bag. First of all, I've got the bag in beige, although it comes in multiple colors and finishes now that it has, you know, it's been released for a little while. The bag that I've got was a medium. It also comes in a small and a micro size. I went for the medium just because I was worried that the small was not gonna have enough room. The bag is made of Napa leather. It is lambskin and it is very soft and yet I feel very, very tough because I have been wearing this bag for about a month now and I haven't scratched her or anything like that. The bag has got a unique construction. We've got the clamped tight area here up top but we've got all of this room here at the bottom. Inside the bag, we've got this really strong hardware where the F is located. And then the interior of the bag has got the Fendi logo. It is the Fendi canvas in the interior. If you get a, a Fendi first in fabric, I believe the inside is suede. I, I think so. If it's, if it's like velvet or uh, tweed or anything like that, it is going to be a suede lining. <clears throat> now this purse does not have any interior pockets. It's just got the one big pocket. It's quite sizable as you can see. I almost feel like I have put the uh, Hermione's never ending charm on this bag because it feels very, very cavernous in there especially in the medium size. They do not have a large, by the way, the medium is their large size, so just FYI. Like I said, it comes in many, many different colors, fabrics, colorways, textures, uh, finishes, so you pretty much have quite a selection. The medium sized handbag, I believe is $3,590. The small is $3,290. And I'm not sure what the cost of the micro is. I will have it listed down here for you. The micro for all intents and purposes to me is not a handbag. It's more just a little art piece that you can carry around with you. Allow me to interrupt this video to introduce myself. My name is Aralia and the content that I provide here is all around style and fashion for the plus size woman, more specifically the petite plus size woman. In addition to posting fashion and style tips, I do a lot of try on hauls, product reviews, and I sprinkle a little bit of lifestyle into the mix. I post content three times a week, so make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss anything here on my channel. All right, let's get back to the video. Now that we've gotten the basics down, let's talk about some of the design features of the bag. First of all, the most obvious is this fantastic F framing that they have at the top of the bag. Of course, they wanted to embody the Fendi logo in some way. This framing that they have here is one of the strongest and most unique design features I've ever seen in a handbag, in my opinion. It is very much reminiscent of bags that Bottega Veneta has been coming out with recently. They have been pushing the envelope as far as bag design is concerned, what with the dumpling bag and the cassette bag. Whereas Fendi took that, but took it in a completely different direction, I think, and in a better direction in my opinion. I feel that this handbag is very, very structural. It's very architectural and sculptural in a lot of ways, not to mention the fact that it has a very, very classic vintage handbag feel because handbags with this kind of framing, they don't make them that much anymore. You can find really nice ones at vintage stores, but you really don't see this design anymore where you've got this, you know, framing here on the inside. I was watching Downton Abbey the other day and she had a little handbag with this kind of framing and she was putting her lipstick on with it. And I'm like, oh my God, that reminds me of my Fendi bag. You can totally do that with this bag. And that's kind of what I really, really like about it is that it has this really strong vintage 
handbag feel to it, but in a really, really beautiful modern way. The other design feature that I really like about this bag is the fact that once you remove the, the strap, which you can uh, remove the strap from this bag, you just simply open up the rings and you take it off. And a lot of handbag designers would have left these little rings out. Fendi has taken it, you know, a little bit further. They thought it really all the way through, I think, in my opinion, because these little rings here can be hidden inside the bag. It is designed to do that. And so essentially what you do is you just push it out a little bit and you have to practice a little bit because you don't want to break these, but you just push it out a little bit and then you turn it and it snaps into place inside here. And you do the same thing on this side to hide it and it just easily, once you learn how to do it, it just easily pops right in there. You even have grooves on this side to accommodate it. By the way, I haven't taken the protective tape off of the inside framing of the bag. I just haven't had the heart to do it just yet. <laughs> but anyway, you close the bag and you are left with nothing here. Those little rings disrupt the lines of the bag. They really do. And the fact that Fendi has found a way to hide them lends to the structural nature of this bag and really makes it feel like it is an art piece. I love that. Me personally, I like carrying the bag as a shoulder bag um, because the strap is uh, long enough that it fits comfortably. I'll show you here in just a second. The strap is not too long that it hits at a weird spot on your hip and not too short that it's sitting under your armpit. It actually sits right at my waist, which is a perfect spot for the bag to hit. If you get the small, it has a thin strap on it. It doesn't have the thicker, shorter strap. It's got a thinner, longer strap so that you can wear it cross body if you want to. You can always go to Fendi and buy a different strap if this one is too short for you. Um, or if you get the small, if that one is too long for you, you can always get a different strap at Fendi. Me personally, I love the way this looks and I really don't feel the need to take the strap off. I simply, if I want to hold it by the frame, I will, or I will just simply tuck it under my arm. And the strap is not very obtrusive. It tucks underneath the bag really very nicely. And so it really um, lends to the overall aesthetic of the bag. So let's talk a little bit about what fits in this bag. First and foremost, the most important thing that I carry with me, no, not my wallet, my phone. I have recently upgraded to the um, iPhone 12 Max Pro. So this is a pretty sizable phone and I just slide it right in, it fits perfectly in there. Next, I don't carry a big wallet, but it could easily fit a big wallet in this bag, but I do carry a little card case and that just has my essential cards in it. I don't like a lot of fuss where that's concerned. I don't carry a checkbook either, and I rarely if ever carry cash. So if I did carry cash, I'd find a way to make it fit in this. This is just a little card case that I have from Coach, and it's just got like my five or six most important cards. I don't carry loyalty cards or anything like that with me. It's just, I just don't. Um, so that fits very easily in there. Car keys, an essential, easily fits in there. My La Mer lip balm. I tend to carry anywhere from two to eight different lip products in my bag at any given time. So let's talk about the lip products that I plan on carrying, you know, these days. I tend to carry two bold lip colors because you know, you never know when you want to put on a pop of color on your lips. So I carry a Clinique lip pop. This is a full size bullet lipstick. I carry my Rare Beauty, my lip mousse in Inspire. This one came in a, in a set, you know, little kit. And so it's not as big, but it would easily fit if it were. So this goes in the bag. I carry my Merit Signature Lip in Millennial um, because this is my everyday nude lip that I love wearing. This is a fantastic lipstick, by the way. I also carry a Merit Shade Slick of some sort. This one is in Marrakesh. So what I'm not showing you here is I also carry a tube of my Tower 28 lip gloss. Generally, it's either coconut or cashew. One of the two goes in my bag and my clear one goes in my bag. I just don't have them here with me right now. And then the lipstick of the day, which happens to be this one. And it's a Maybelline lipstick in Chocolate Lust. And so that goes in the bag. Carry a hand sanitizer and a 
um, tube of hand lotion. That's what I carry on an everyday basis. I could also, if I wanted to, carry my sunglasses, which happen to be a pair of Fendi sunglasses, quite a sizable little case here. That fits in easily. And also my regular reading glasses, if I needed to, wanted to, I could put them in there. And I still have room to spare. I could add more things. Now I have in the past, when I first got this bag, I was putting my vlogging camera in there, which is actually my just general camera that I'm recording on right now, so I can't show you, but it fits in this space right here. I do have to finagle it in a little bit, but if I really, really wanted to, I could carry my vlogging camera in this purse, no problem. And there you have it. Everything fits, um, even though I've got a lot in here, it is maintaining its shape very, very well. It can hold quite a bit. I'm gonna go ahead and take out my sunglasses and my reading glasses because that's not something that I carry with me every day. So really, my everyday stuff is all right here and we still have loads and loads of room to spare in here. So now let's talk a little bit about some of the design flaws of the bag. I wouldn't necessarily call this first thing a flaw. It's just something to keep in to keep in mind. And that is, is that the bag is very weighty. It is weighty empty. As you add stuff in there, it's going to weigh more and more and more. So this is one of the heavier handbags that I own. However, the strap is comfortable enough that I don't feel that it's like weighing me down because it is a really good length and it's a really good width. I don't feel that it is overly heavy. The um, other thing that you can do though is you can easily carry it under your arm as a clutch as well and give it some support that way. And it's not gonna feel as heavy that way either. The other thing that I would call a minor flaw, something to watch out for, is this little button right here. Um, you have to kind of finagle it a little bit in order to get it to, in order to get the bag to open. Otherwise, it's it can be quite challenging to open up this bag, and I worry that with that fiddling, you know, about right here, I could scratch the leather around here, or I could scratch this hardware maybe. Thankfully, I don't have very long nails, but if you do have long nails, that is something to be mindful of because it can be a little bit fidgety. You know, you have to you know fuss with it a little bit. I have figured out that you can press this button and pull back a little bit and that will open the bag up a lot easier but that maneuver is not always easy to do so just keep that in mind is that this little button this opening here can be a little bit finicky sometimes the other design flaw that i see and this one to me feels much more like a flaw than any of the other things and that is that i wish that the bag had feet I, it has no feet. Being as expensive a bag as it is, you would think that it would have feet because you have to be mindful of where you're setting this down, the surfaces that you're setting it down onto because it could get dirty. It will, This will get dirty at some point and I'll have to make sure to keep that clean, especially because it's a lighter color. I do wish that it had feet. I would want that extra little bit of protection on the bottom of the bag. I don't know that it would increase production costs all that much to add feet, but I don't know. I'm not a bag designer, so maybe it just it wasn't feasible. But if it is, Cindy, please put feet on these bags. I think that they could really, really use a set of feet. I always love bags that have feet, by the way. So far in the, in the month that I have been wearing this, I haven't really come across anything that I feel is a flaw or not workable. I absolutely love, love, love my Fendi First handbag. The first person I saw with it was my good friend here on YouTube, Ada Song Styling. I'll link her video where she talks about her Fendi First small that she has. When I first saw it, it took my breath away. Well, let me just say that Fendi has never produced a bag that has made me gasp and it's like, oh my, I have got to have that bag. I mean, honestly, there have only been a few bags in in my lifetime that I've looked at and said, oh, I have got to have that bag. But this bag really, really made an impression on me. I was like, oh my gosh, I have got to get my hands on this bag because it is special. It really is something very special to me from a handbag perspective because they don't make handbags like this anymore that have got that 
hardware right here you know this is very very vintage in feel and in look but it is vintage in a modern way i've said it's iconic and i stand by that i'm going to go out on a limb and i'm going to say this handbag will only increase in value maybe not right away but I think that it is going to be one of those types of handbags that is highly collectible and over time will become more valuable because these bags are so different to any kind of handbag that we have seen in recent times. Hermes has got the Birkin and the Kelly and those were iconic bags. You know, Chanel's got their iconic bag and now Fendi has got their iconic bag. This bag is absolutely stunning. And I know that this bag is a bag that I will be able to wear now in five years, 10 years, 15, 20, 25 years from now, this bag is still going to look really good and it's still going to be relevant, I think. It's going to be one of those types of bags that even if Fendi stops producing these, they're gonna be, still be very collectible. And I love that. I love this bag so much that I've got my eyes set on getting the small version because it's that collectible to me. And I don't have any bags like that. I'm not gonna get the micro just because I don't, I don't see the point in micro bags. They're just decoration um, versus um, having an actual bag that is utility and decoration. If you are going to make an investment in this bag, just know that you are purchasing an iconic bag something that is going to be here for the long haul it may have its little design flaws they may improve on it in future iterations who knows but still worth it in my opinion it's going to style so many different ways i've worn it casually i've worn it dressed up I've not worn it as an evening bag because I would rather have the small as an evening bag. I just feel this is too big to be an evening bag, but uh, it can definitely, if you have the small, it can definitely go that way. I feel that it is a worthy investment and I think that the sooner you get it, the better because luxury handbag prices are only gonna continue increasing. So now is the time to jump on it. If you've been debating, this bag is going to be a mainstay in your wardrobe. You're gonna be able to wear it for years and years to come and turn heads whenever you do. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it or found it useful in any way. It really helps my channel out. It pushes it out into the YouTube algorithm so that more people can get their eyeballs on what I'm doing here. Granted, this video is a little bit outside of my normal video, but I felt that this is definitely a style piece that you should know about. Thank you as always for spending a few minutes of your day with me. I truly appreciate it. Remember to live your life filled with confidence, grace, and style. I will see you in my next upload. Bye.